Hey kids, Mr. and Fly here, hope you're well. Now for the last four, six weeks, something like that, I've been borrowing this from a company called Lexmoto. It's the Valletta Scooter. It's a 125cc Chinese built machine. You can pick these up for an absolute bargain. They're something like 1,600 quid new. So hence they get a lot of criticism. So I've been uh, riding this in all sorts of conditions on all sorts of roads over the last few weeks. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what I've discovered. So if you're interested in cheap Chinese scooters, stick around and stay tuned. So Chinese built machines come in for an awful lot of stick, don't they, at the moment? And uh, sometimes justified, sometimes not so. Um, but what I want to do with this review is really get to understand this bike, what it was like to live with. So as I say, I've ridden it as much as I can for the last month or so, and I've ridden it in the rain, I've ridden it on uh, fast roads, I've ridden it through town, I've ridden it on country lanes, uh, and I've really got to know about this little scooter, what, it, what it's like. So uh, in this video, I'm going to take you through those various um, scenarios that I've ridden in, show you those things, uh, and then I'm also going to take you through the cost of ownership of one of these things. I've done some research on how much these things are going to cost you if you want to buy and keep one, so uh, that's coming up. And then at the end of the video, what I'm going to do is go through the list of pros and cons, all the things, all the negative and positive points that I found out about the Lexmoto Valletta. So uh, if you're in the market for a cheap scooter, you're going to want to stay tuned to this video. So how does the little Valletta score in wet weather? Well, it's a pretty horrible day today. It's uh, just stopped raining, but I was riding when it was raining just now. Uh, and this is one of the areas that uh, scooters of this type actually score quite well. Because, of course, they've got all this masses of weather protection on them. So when you're going along on maybe slightly faster roads than this in the wet, you are protected from the spray and so on all being thrown up at you. So from that point of view, they're very practical in the wet. I guess where the little Valletta is not so uh, practical or maybe not so confidence inspiring is the fact that... Uh, it doesn't have anything like ABS or traction control, of course, it's a very simple machine. It is Euro 4 compliant, but bikes that are 125cc or less don't have to have ABS, uh, and they just have linked brakes, so you haven't got that sort of level of electronic, thank you sir, electronic protection that you may have on more sophisticated motorcycles. But again, you're not going to be riding super quick, so uh, hopefully that's not going to be a problem. I guess the only other thing to note about riding in the wet on the little Valletta is its tyres. It has very small wheels of course, it being a small scooter, and the tyres themselves are of a Chinese make of an unknown origin. <laughs> They're tyres I've never heard of before, and therefore I'm a little bit sceptical of the grip. I've not had any issues, I have to say. It's not slipped and sl slid with me, but I'm conscious that I don't want to be herring around corners at high speed in the wet because uh, you could slip off because they've got a very small contact batch being a small tyre, and as I say, uh, they're, they're a brand I've never heard of. All that said, I've not had a problem with them. So overall in the wet, I think uh, the little uh, Valletta scores pretty highly actually. Now I'm on this slightly faster road, you know on a normal bike you'll be having all the crud and crap thrown up at you. On here you feel quite well protected. Just take it easy on the corners and on the brakes. So what's it like on faster roads, on uh, dual carriageways and so on, on the uh, little Valletta? Well, here I am on a dual carriageway, going slightly uphill, <laughs> I'm going flat out, and I'm doing an indicated 50 miles an hour. As uh, this, I'm going over a little crest here and it goes downhill, I'm sure it'll go a bit faster. Uh, I have seen 60 miles an hour on the bike, so uh, on a dual carriageway, if you're in lane one, the inside lane, then I think you're perfectly okay for short distances. I don't think I want to go onto a motorway with one of these though, even though the speed limit of course on the dual carriageway and the motorway is the same at 70 miles an hour, you're not going to reach 70 miles an hour on the scooter and you do feel a little bit vulnerable. So for short stretches on fast roads, dual carriageways and the like, yeah, not a problem. But if your whole commute is on motorways and dual carriageways, maybe you'd want to give it a miss. But uh, certainly it keeps up with traffic at these sorts of speeds. Here we go, I'm going down the other side now, that little hill, and I'm now doing an indicated uh, 55 now. And again, I, I'm, t I'm flat out. So what's the little Valletta scooter like to ride at night then? Well, actually surprisingly not bad. The headlight on it works pretty well. I think it might even be an LED light, you know. Uh, during the daytime, uh, it's just like an LED running light. It looks quite cute at the front. And at night time, this is on dip at the moment. And the GoPro never really picks up what lights are like properly on uh, on bikes. But take it from me, that's, that's a perfectly good light. I've ridden motorcycles proper, you know, normal motorcycles with lesser lights than that. If I go to full beam, there we go, and it 
checks out the light for a, a long way down the road. It's as good as my car. That really is. I'm not joking. Very surprised. The lights on here, absolutely fine. Let's go uh, just have a little look at the instrumentation. This is all lit up nicely here. Nice and clear at night. So yeah, um, impressed with that. I expected it to be a bit dim and dismal, but actually the lights on here, absolutely fine. So uh, riding at night on the uh, little scooter, no problem at all. Okay, so at the start of the video, I said that I'd uh, put together some calculations about how much one of these bikes are going to cost you to own and run. So uh, I've made some notes, so let me just take you through these. So first off, obviously you've got to buy the bike, and I already mentioned that these things are, are pretty cheap. You can get one of these, uh, I had a look on the internet, you can get them for 1,600 quid or just under uh, brand new, which is unbelievable value for a new vehicle, isn't it? So, uh, so first of all, they're cheap to buy. And then in terms of running cost, uh, road tax, vehicle excise duty, as we should call it, because this is a small uh, capacity machine, it comes in at £18 per year, so virtually nothing. Thing. 18 quid a year for road tax. Um, servicing on this, you need to budget about £100 a year for servicing. Uh, insurance, got a quote from my friends at Principal, uh, and they tell me that uh, for me, with my um, sort of profile where I live, etc., so this is just an indicative cost, this would cost me £84.30 a year to insure with a £300 excess. So, uh, again, really cheap to insure. Uh, so, that gives a total of £202.30 per annum, or divided by 12, £16.85 a month to run one of these machines. So, that's no petrol, just uh, having it in your garage available to ride, £16.85 a month, uh, absolute bargain. I mean, give me some other transport options that cost as little as that. That cost me more than that to go into London once on the train and I only live 30 minutes away. So what's the little Valletta like in town and cities then? Well, of course, this is their home ground, isn't it? This is what they were invented for. And uh, nipping around towns, dead easy on a scooter. You don't have to think about what you're doing riding it because there's no gears or clutch or anything like that to worry about. You literally twist and go. Just have to keep your eyes out on what the traffic's doing, what pedestrians are doing and off you go. So uh, yeah, this is an urban vehicle extraordinaire if ever there was one. If you just need to uh, get around town then these are, the, these are the machines to do it with. I mean this is just a little uh, market town. This is uh, Amersham on the hill. But even if you're in a big metropolitan area like Manchester or London or Birmingham and you need to nip through traffic, then you just cannot beat a scooter. For things like filtering and so on, they're just uh, super easy to get along with, low centre of gravity, easy to weave around, and uh, well, the perfect urban transport really. I don't think at the moment there's really anything that can beat it, other than maybe an electric scooter. So how about keeping the scooter clean? Well, it gets pretty dirty as you can see, particularly around the engine, around the swing arm there, and where your feet go on the footboards seem to attract dirt. So uh, one of the things I would say about these, the bikes, so because of all the um, bodywork, they're actually quite easy to clean, except for, again, around by the engine, and particularly, the most difficult bit I find is the wheels. Uh, but other than that, pretty straightforward bike to keep clean. Um, you know, it pays you to look after them, and once the thing's washed down, it looks really good too. So I've done a number of uh, long-term living with type reviews on lots of different bikes over the uh, past couple of years. And uh, one question that somebody recently asked me, they said, could I do on these, uh, on these videos, is can I demonstrate what the horn is like? So just to show you a few practical items. First of all, the horn on this, uh, it's like this. <laughs> So actually that sounds exactly the same as the horn on my Honda CRF, so no problem with the horn. Another thing you're going to want to know about a scooter is what's it like under the seat. So let me show you the storage under the seat. I'll just shift the camera. Okay then, the old uh, seat on a scooter, very important of course, because not only are they comfortable, but also you can store stuff underneath them. So on this one, it lifts up like that. Uh, looks a reasonable size, you can get a good, uh, good shopping bag in there, but what you can't get, unfortunately, is a helmet, as I'll show you. So this is my AGV helmet, which has got a relatively small shell. If I pop that in there, all that will go in, it doesn't quite, you can't actually close the seat, which is a little bit annoying. And I've tried various helmets in here, I've got a number of helmets, and none of them fit with the seat closing. So that's a little bit disappointing. The other problem with this is I've found that I can't actually get the seat to lock down. Now, I have spoken to Lex Moto about this, it might just need a bit of WD or something, but there's the little clip here doesn't seem to want to go home, uh, and I've tried all sorts of things to make that happen. So that's just one downside, is I can't get the seat to clip in. Okay, uh, what else about the bike practically? Oh, let me show you the seating position when I'm sat on it. 
Okay, so I feel a bit of a nutter doing this, but this is again something else that somebody asked me to do on these reviews is sit on the bike and show you what my sitting position is. So on here, your legs go quite wide, of course, because you've got this big old footboard to clear. Uh, so, um, but having said that, the weight is so low, um, you know, my feet, I'm basically, I can flat foot it either side. So uh, the seating position on this for me at five foot eight, absolutely fine. And I can't imagine there's anybody that this bike is going to be too, uh, too big or too heavy for. As I say, weight is carried nice and low. Uh, so, you know, really easy bike to live with in that respect. Now, one of the great things about the uh, little Valletta and indeed all scooters of this type is they're extremely frugal to run so visits to the fuel station will be f uh, few and far between. Uh, however you do need to put some uh, go juice in occasionally so I'm just going to go and give that a try on here now see what that's like. Uh, another good point about this it does have a full proper fuel gauge you can see I've got one bar at the moment so I need to go and fill her up. She only holds something like six litres uh, so, so just about a gallon just over a gallon uh, but that should be good for at least a hundred miles. Anyway let's go and see uh, here you go about filling one of these babies up. Right, here we go. So to fill these, the fuel actually goes in down here. So there's this little door you undo with the ignition key. And there's a the fuel gap. She pops no difficulty at all and let's see this will be the shortest fuel up in history it's actually quite a small uh, orifice to put the nozzle in and uh, if you squirt the fuel at full tilt it'll overflow so you've just got to sort of dribble it in there you go no problemo cap back on Okay, so no drama there, glad to say. Let's see if uh, she registers that we've put some fuel in. Yeah, and immediately the uh, fuel gauge shows that we're full now. Brilliant. And, interestingly, the trip has reset to zero. Right, onwards and upwards. So, pleased to say, absolutely no drama getting fuel on board. And uh, as I say, really pleased to see a proper fuel gauge on the bike. There's so many, you know, full-size motorbikes that don't do that these days. So, uh, nice to see that's an essential gauge, I think, that has been included on the little Valletta. Okay, so what's the little scooter like for moving around driveways, car parks, that sort of thing? Well, I found this handy car park here. Let's just pretend I'm going to wheel it back into that spot there. Now, the beauty of scooters, of course, is that the weight is completely low down on these, so they're so, so easy to manoeuvre. It's got a uh, tight little turning circle on this, look, and you can literally move it around. It's no harder than a bicycle. There you go. Unbelievably easy to move around. So on your driveway, in your garage, parking up, whatever, you just can't beat a scooter. I mean, the, the engine being right back here and right low down means that uh, your leverage on the handlebars is amazing. So absolutely no issue lugging these around. Even if you are a nine-stone weakling or a schoolgirl, you'll have no problems with the Valletta. Brilliant. So at the start of the video, I said uh, that I would uh, give you a list of the things that I found out about the bike now that I've been riding it for just over a month. What are the positives and negatives? Well, let's start with the negatives. There are a couple of things that I thought worth pointing out. First off, um, things like the suspension. Uh, generally speaking, if you're going at low speed, it's fine. But once you get above sort of 40 miles an hour, particularly if you're on one of the back lanes around here where there are lots of potholes and bumps, the suspension I can only describe as crashy. It really does, you can feel every single bump on the road. Might also be related to the fact that it's got small wheels, of course, but uh, the suspension really is cheap and nasty. Sorry about that Lex motor. there's no other way of saying it, the suspension is horrible on the bike. Uh, the other thing that uh, took a bit of getting used to are the brakes. 
uh, I find them pretty snatchy actually. So on the right hand side uh, here, that I assume is the back brake, that one is basically ineffective. Uh, on the left hand side, the side which I assume is the front brake, um, that's really, really snatchy. Uh, that's why I think it's the front brake because it's much more effective than the other one. So you've got to be quite careful. It takes a while to get used to the brakes. You've got to be very careful when you start with uh, on the brakes. They do work fine, uh, but one you have to pull really hard, the other one you have to be gentle with. So uh, I may have it round the wrong way, but that's just something to be aware of if you get one of these bikes. The other thing that was a bit um, bit naff about the bike is the manual that comes with it. Again, maybe it's a small point, but it's written in a very strange version of English and you have to kind of interpret it quite a bit. Uh, so that was that. Um, and then the only other thing that uh, I noticed that was a bit of a nuisance as a UK rider is the uh, Odo or trip counter on the uh, on the dash is in kilometres, not miles. The Speedo itself has got kilometres on the outside and then miles on the inside, so that's fine. But the actual uh, trip uh, counter is in kilometres, so that may or may not be an issue for you depending on whereabouts you are. And that was it for the negatives. Uh, everything else pretty good. So let's just run through the uh, positive points that I found. So a couple of the main positive points then that, uh, that I've discovered about the bike. First of all, of course, the cost. Uh, as I mentioned before, 1,600 quid for the bike new, so the cost, of course, is great. Uh, but other things that you wouldn't necessarily uh, know, number one, it goes really, really well. For a 125, uh, I was surprised with the amount of shove that this has got. I'm comparing it to other 125s that I've ridden, um, and this, given it's a scooter, and therefore it's got that um, uh, kind of V-belt transmission that feels like it's slipping all the time, which, of course, it is, um, it, it goes really well. So, um, you know, it tops out something like you can get 60 miles an hour out of it if you've got a bit of a falling wind and you tuck down, but uh, generally, speaking it doesn't feel too much like a sloth which is great news um the other thing is i just think it looks great i mean it just looks like a classic scooter doesn't it if uh, maybe it doesn't mingle in so well here in south buckinghamshire but if you're in italy or paris i think this would be an absolutely brilliant thing to be riding around the town in uh, so that's great uh, and then the other thing is it's just easy to ride i mean twist and go no clutch to worry about just uh, turn on and off you go very very easy to ride so uh, yeah so some uh, great points there that i found out about the bike so um all right, uh, so what are my closing thoughts then on the little uh, Lexmoto Valletta? So there we have it. That's, uh, that's my long-term ownership type review on the Lexmoto Valletta. So what are my closing thoughts? Well, uh, overall, I've been left with, I think, a, an overall positive uh, impression of the bike. When you're riding it, there's no... I, I mentioned the suspension's a bit crashy, and I mentioned the brakes are a bit grabby, but it goes well. There's no horrible rattles or anything like that. The, the weather protection's pretty good. If you just need something for local transport, this would be ideal, and it certainly doesn't come any cheaper than this, does it? Any sort of, uh, any sort of vehicle. If you can get one that's cheaper than this to run, uh, I'd be amazed. Um, would I want to go on tour on it? No, I wouldn't. Would I want to go on a motor on it? No, I wouldn't. Uh, so obviously you have to ride it within the limitations, but uh, for a practical, cheap local transport or urban transport, I don't think you can go far wrong with this one. Uh, yeah, uh, a great little scooter. I'm a scooter fan, so I look forward to riding some more soon. Anyway, there we go. Hope that's been of some interest to you. Look forward to speaking to you in the future. Till then, this has been the Missing and Fly. Cheerio.